Okay, we're going to do two examples where we've got rational equations. Example 8 and then example 9. And I guess we should walk through both together. You know, slightly different, I guess. And, of course, we have to use the quadratic formula because we'll, we'll end up with uh, quadratic equations. Okay, so we start with rational equations. They're going to turn into quadratic equations. Then we need to use the quadratic formula. So, do you remember how to solve rational equations? Um, the way we practiced it was we decided, look, if, if we make all the bottoms the same, then we'll have the same we'll have uh, we'll be able to set the tops equal okay so let's just forget about this fraction for now and just make these bottoms the same how would you make these bottoms the same imagine you're adding the fractions well you could times this by y plus 4 okay and what would you times this one by times this guy by y, right? So now both bottoms are the same for these fractions. So times this guy by y over y times this guy by y plus 4 over y plus 4. Okay. Now I also have a 7 to consider. <laughs> okay. So um, like to, to keep this fraction bo fractions bottom the same as these I've got to include the y and the y plus 4. So I've got to multiply this guy by y over y and y plus 4 over y plus 4. Okay. And now I have a 7 missing from all of my fraction from my fractions on the left. So I must multiply 7 over 7 into both of these, right? Now all the bottoms have 7y y plus 4, 7y y plus 4, 7y y plus 4. Okay? And the trick is now look all the bottoms are the same you can just set the tops equal because if I was to add these tops it would be the same fraction. So what I'm saying is uh, 7 times y plus 4 plus this top is just 7 times y 7y is equal to, I guess you can put parentheses there if you, if you feel like it, it doesn't matter equals this top which is just you know y times y plus 4 and then you can solve the equation from there. The step that we leave out, that I like to leave out, is saying that, look, these bottoms are the same, I can add these fractions and get 7 times y plus 4 plus 7y all over 7 times uh, y plus 4 times y is equal to y times y plus 4 over 7y times y plus 4. Okay, I leave that step out because, you know, you don't need it. And But this step here shows that, look, you've got this fraction equal to this fraction. Both of their bottoms are exactly the same. 7y times y plus 4. 7y times y plus 4. Same thing, right? If these fractions are equal and their bottoms are the same, then the tops have to be the same. And so you can just set the top equal to the top like like we did here and just solve it. So that was the logic we used for solving rational equations. So if we simplify this what do we get? Seven y plus twenty eight, right? Plus seven y equals and then multiply the y in y squared plus 4y, right? And then keep going and see what you can come up with. By all means, at this point, press pause and complete the question. See what you get. Okay, so we should add like terms on the left. That would be 14y plus 28, right? Now, with the quadratic formula, remember, it has to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We need zero on one side, and then we can solve it. Okay? We do not have zero on one side. We have to get zero on one side, right? I like to keep the y squared positive, so I'll subtract 14y from both sides, and that gives me 28 equals y squared 
minus 10y, a little bit closer to the answer, and now what should I do to get 0 on one side? Well, I'm just going to subtract 28. So 0 equals y squared minus 10y minus 28. Now you can give your value of a, b, and c, right? So a is 1, b is negative 10, c is negative 28. And now you can solve for y, just like you used to solve for x. I mean, we have y this time, it, you know, it could be x, same thing, right? So by all means, press pause and try and get the answer from here. So, you know, do that actually. Press pause and get the answer and then I'll do it quickly, okay? So press pause and try it. I'm going to do it quickly now. Okay, here I go. I'm going to use my formula and all that type of thing. I've got 1, negative 10, negative 28, so um, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm going to plug in a is 1, b is negative 10, c is negative 28. I'm going to calculate everything now. So that's what I should have. If you don't have that, press pause and continue from here. Negative negative is positive 10. Plus or minus, the bottom is 2. Calculate the root. Negative 10 squared. Negative 10 times negative 10. Negative 4 times 1. Negative 4. Then times negative 28. This gives me 100. Negative 4 times 28 is 28 times 4, 4 times 8 is 32, carry the 3, 4 times 2 is 8, and 3 is 11. So, yes, I get plus 112, so that's root of 212. So, if you are stuck here, let me give you a couple of points. First of all, why don't you pull a two, factor this, factor a 2 out of 212 and see what you get. Right? So what's 2 into 21? For Or what's 2 into 2? 2 into 2 goes once, right? 2 into 1 goes 0 times, but 2 into 12, 2 into 12 is 6. So 2 times 106. And then factor a 2 out of the 106. So by all means, press pause and continue from here if you're stuck on this. Okay? Now 2 into 10, you see, goes 5 times. And 2 into 6 goes 3 times. And 53, if you know our times tables, think about it for a minute. Can you factor anything out of 53? Can 53 be factored? <coughs> Try it for a while there, but you'll find it's a prime number, pretty sure. And um, so the best you can do is, is you, you can factor 212 down to here, and that's the best you can do. Now, um, yeah, root of 2 times 2 is just root 4, or 2, and root 53 can't be factored more, so it's 2 root 53. So I have 10 plus or minus 2 root 53, okay, and I can in fact simplify this guy, because I can pull out a common factor from 10 and 2. So I can simplify this fraction by pulling out a common factor. So if you haven't done so, please press pause and try and get it from here. Okay, now the common factor is 2, so I'm going to pull 2 out. 2 times what gives 10? 2 times 5 gives 10. Plus or minus 2 times what gives 2 root 53? Root 53. 2 times root 53 would be 2 root 53. Okay, and then it's all over 2. And now I can cross cancel common factors. This 2 cross cancels with this 2. See that? So I get just 1 times this over 1. So that is, so we have, oh, this was y, wasn't it? Not x, sorry, y. Uh -huh. So y equals that. y equals 5 plus or minus root 53. So you could say um, y equals 5 plus 
root 53 or comma 5 minus root 53 and if you want to approximate that to three decimal places we would probably need to do that too so 5 plus so I'm getting 12.2801 so round it down 12.280 so approximately that and then 5 minus root 53 5 minus negative 2.2801 negative 2.280 okay so we've got exact solutions are these guys with the roots, the exact roots, and then when we rounded, we get the approximate solutions to three decimal places. Okay. Now, example nine, let's walk through this together because we may have forgotten how to solve rational equations, and then once you know what you're doing, by all means, press pause and just go with it and try and get the answer. Okay, so I've got fractions in this equation. The first thing is to turn everything into a fraction. How would you turn x into a fraction? x is the same thing as x over what? x over x over 1, right? How would you make all of the bottoms the same? Let's just make these bottoms the same. This and this. What would you do? Well, you could just multiply this by a 2, right? 2 over 2. Now they both have a 2 in the bottom, right? But we also have this bottom to consider, which is x. So I need to multiply this guy by a 2 over 2. And now we've got 2x here. And of course, we need an x everywhere here, don't we? Now, all the bottoms are the same. Therefore, I can set the tops equal. So we can have 2xx x plus 5x. equals 2 times 3. Right? Basically, right? The bottoms are the same, we can set the tops equal. And the reason for that really quickly is because, you know, 2xx is 2x squared, you know, plus 5x. So this left-hand side becomes 2x plus 5x over 2x, and the right is 6 over 2x. And you see how we have this fraction equal to this fraction, and the bottoms are the same. Well, logically, then, the tops have to be the same, too, right? So, yes, we get 2x squared plus 5x is equal to 6. Now, please press pause and solve this quadratic equation with the quadratic formula. It has an x squared term. There's an equal sign. It's an equation. Because of the x squared, it means it's quadratic. Quadratic equation. Use the quadratic formula. Solve it. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to do it now really quickly. I needed to subtract 6 from both sides because I need to have 0 on one side. Now I can read the value of a, b, and c. a is 2, b is 5, c is negative 6. Now I can use the formula. Okay. A goes plugged in here and here. B is 5. That goes here and here. C is negative 6. So I get negative 5 plus or minus whatever. That makes all over 4. And I'll calculate this here. Root of 5 times 5. My, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Then times negative 6. This gives me 25. Now negative times negative is positive. So positive 48. Okay. And if I add those together, 5 and 8 is 13, carry the 1, 1 and 4 is 5, and 2 is 7, I guess, yep, yeah. and uh, 73, can I factor that? 2 won't go into it because it's an odd number, 3 doesn't go in there, 4 doesn't go in there. 5 doesn't go in, 6 doesn't go into the 73, 7 doesn't go into 73, 8 doesn't, 9 doesn't, um, 10 does not, 11, 12, 13 does not go in there, 14, 15, so this is 
as far as I can get. So root 73. And so my answer is simply x equals negative 5 plus root 73 over 4 or negative 5 minus root 73 over 4. Okay? Two exact solutions. And I guess we could um, also calculate those as, as decimals if you're asked to as well. You'd be able to do that, right?